tonight on Swords. Gotta be kidding me, man. Bad luck continues to plague the fishing fleet. Can't kind of see out here, and it's, it's in the car in about a minute. Man, I ain't seen nothing like this for a long time here. Mother Nature exerts her awesome power. This is intense as hell. I can't even believe this is happening right now. Just off the coast of Massachusetts. Right now, we're uh, scheming a fair haven. Captain Scotty Drabinowitz and the Eagle Eye 2 have endured a horrible first half of the season. Hold's looking pretty empty right now. And after an all out war with Japanese longliners on the Grand Banks. Enough is enough. We're going to exit the Grand Banks and head to the west and uh, fish on Georgia's here for the remainder of this trip. With the swordfish heading south to warmer waters, the Eagle Eye 2 has no choice but to follow them to George's Banks, just off the coast of New England. But first, they'll make port in Fairhaven, Massachusetts, and see what they've earned so far. So we're gonna dart in, get some more supplies, offload a bit of swordfish we got. With the right market price, Scotty and the Eagle Eye 2 could make up to $100,000. Let's keep our fingers crossed, you know. We'll know more in a few hours. We'll put it that way. Taking the fish off. We have like 13 or 14,000 something on board yet. With the economic fate of the boat on the line, the last of their Grand Bank swordfish exit the Eagle Eye 2. Yeah, nice fish. 283, Jim, on the scale. Oh, it's not a nice one. Fish are looking really good so far. A little bigger than what I think we thought, so that's good. Rather have them bigger than smaller. So this might work out in our favor, yeah? After their sorry season on the Grand Banks, the crew needs today's offload to pay off. Anything over $6? It's great. See my dollars go up. Good to go, you know? We'll be number one all over again. Just about done here. Looking forward to wrapping it up. Last piece. The final sword gets put on the scale, and Scotty gets some good news for a change. Yeah, the price is all right. Six seventy-five a pound. So, we've got a nice, uh, solid little trip on the boat here now. The boat makes ninety-three thousand dollars for coming in, enough to cover expenses, but they'll need another trip to put cash in the crew's pockets. I want to finish this season strong, man. I want to make some money. Christmas is only around the corner. We need to make some money. No we fans or buttons. They've got a day and a half steam in front of them before they can get on the fish and get back in the game. I haven't heard any fishing reports, so we're going out a little blind here. But I always do like a challenge. Thousand miles to the northeast. Captain Chris Chomps Hansen is suffering his worst season ever on the fishing vessel Big Eye. This trip has not been profitable, so therefore there's turmoil on the boat, there's turmoil with the crew, there's turmoil with the captain. Uh, I'm really, really worrying about my next month's income because I have no income right now. I've been gone for over 30 days from home and I have not one red penny to provide for my house, my home, or my family. So therefore, I can't provide for my family, my house, my home, I damn sure can't provide for the crew members that I have working for me. The difference between making a season or going home empty-handed rests on Chomper's next move. Well, it's been a piss poor season on the Grand Banks. We struck out and we're one of many that has struck out. Been out here way too long. 
we're broke. We ain't even made any money, so and the only way thing I know to do is do what I do, and that's go fishing. So if we're gonna head in George's, hopefully our luck's better. Chopper's best hope: steam 1,200 miles southwest to join Scotty on George's bank and fish his way home. But first, we got no fuel, so I guess we're gonna head to Sambro, load up, and uh, go right back out. They'll have to refuel in Sambro, Nova Scotia putting the big eye even further behind the rest of the fleet. The sooner we get back out, the sooner we get home anyway. That's my plan right there. The sooner I can get home, until I get there, I'm not gonna be happy. Nova Scotia ain't gonna make me happy. It's just gonna make me hungover. You ain't got no choice, Cap. No, hey. best I can do, y'all. Get the, get the deck secure and uh, we'll be steaming within the hour. We have to go to Sambro because there's no fuel on the boat. There's no food. We're out of bait almost. We've really got no choice but to go in Sambro. As far as going into the harbor, it's something I have to do. I have no choice. We have no fuel. We just got to do it. So spilt milk's for crying cats. I just got to suck it up and do it. Twelve hundred miles to the southwest, at the dock in Barnegat Light, New Jersey. More or less, this is stopped and locked and ready to rock for a full trip. That's us right now. Captain Slick Clem and the crew of the fishing vessel Francis Ann prep for a late night steam out. We need to be out. We need to be out first. Ready to rock. They've been fishing George's Bank all season, but were forced into port with a busted autopilot. Now, they've fallen behind other boats in the swordfish fleet. To get the autopilot fixed, it ended up being a couple things. Now they're all repaired and good to go, so hopefully we can wipe our hands clean of that mess and just go out and worry about catching fish. All right. We're out of here. Last trip. And away we go. We got the whole family down here saying goodbye, getting out of here. It's tough to say goodbye sometimes, but you gotta do it. It's no room for being soft in this industry. Last trip of the fall swordfish season. We'll see if we do it big. Uh, if we don't, boy, it's gonna be a disappointing season. We all could use the money. We need to really go out with the bank here. You know, we'll wrap this season up. Not going to Georgia's. We're gonna be fishing Hudson Canyon area right now. Be some swordfish there, some yellowfin, some big eye tunas. Captain Slick takes a chance on a new fishing ground, Hudson Canyon, one of the deepest underwater canyons in the world, a hundred miles off the coast of New Jersey. I want to be the first to have my set. I want to be in control of the set. I don't want to be second, third, or fourth boat out. I want to be in the sweet spot. I want to be in the zone. I want to be in command. Oh, if fish decide they want to move, we can follow them. Like, we can bump another boat away if we want, because we are in control. It's our spot, if we get it. We need, we need to be in that position. We need that spot, and we need it bad. There's nothing that's going to turn us around, nothing at all. Nobody getting seasick, nobody missing mommy, no, <laughs> no nothing. As they leave Barnegat Light behind, What the f man? Did I see land this way? Uh, land, land was just behind us five minutes ago. And now I see land this way. This is We're definitely going the wrong way right now. Oh, Slick just backed off the engines a little bit. We only made it two miles off the beach and we already had to back it. I don't know what's going on right now. Once again, the boat's autopilot is down. Without it, Slick can't keep the boat on course and is forced to turn around. Unbelievable, man. Autopilot's not working, Potter. Oh. Autopilot's not working, Slick's pissed. Oh, no. He's docked. The autopilot's still not working. I don't even want to come close to the wheelhouse right now. Gotta be kidding 
me, man. Gotta be kidding me. We weren't even supposed to be in from the last trip. We were supposed to be still out there fishing right now. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I can't even believe this is happening right now. miles off the coast of Newfoundland. Captain Linda Greenlaw and the Hannah Bowden are still on the Grand Banks. Everyone's got Georgia's covered. Georgia's is covered from east to west, north to south. Every inch of Georgia's is covered. There are so many boats they'll be fishing five and six abreast. The inside boat will be catching fish and everyone else will be sucking wind. I want to go join that? I don't think so. But for Linda, it's a buck conventional wisdom. She needs to prove that there are still swords here to be caught. To that end, they put 30 miles of hooks in the water last night. Oh, days going by. Pretty slow fishing. 50 hooks come up, and so far, no swordfish. Want to make a bet? Come on, want to do some gambling? Okay. Johnny, you're hauling odds up. I'm hauling evens. Whoever loses has to eat blue shark for supper. <laughs> Me and Linda just made a side bet. We're each hauling every other section. So whoever catches the most fish between me and her, the loser has to eat blue shark steak, which isn't very palatable. The winner gets to prepare the blue shark dinner. I'm a great cook. Johnny's in for a real treat. Blue sharks, also known as blue dogs, are the bane of the fishing fleet. When a boat is sharked up, it's blue sharks that are the culprit. People don't eat blue dog because uh, the urinary tract is kind of screwed up and they uh, urinate through this skin. So if you let them sit out for a little while, it gets a funny urinary smell to them, you know, then uh, <laughs> that can't be good. After a dismal morning, Jordan! there's money on the line. Well, that's a nice fat fish. I'm sitting here contemplating recipes, how I might like to cook Johnny's Blue Shark Room tonight. Each beeper buoy marks the end of one section of the main line. Johnny now takes over at the hull station. Right now, Linda's got one swordfish and I got nothing. Right away, it's dead even. Whoa! Nice score! Nice one. Score, it's all evened up. One to one. Swordfish! swordfish. But it's not tied up for long. Careful. That's a nice fish. With three swords hauled in, the score is now Johnny 2, Linda 1. I still get to haul a few sections here. I'm just teasing Johnny Brewer, giving me a little false sense of security here. She knew better than to mess with me. Not over till it's over, though. 1,200 miles to the southwest. Back again at the dock in Barnegat Light, New Jersey. It's gotta be something. And like I said, I had this down there, all over next to this, around this, pull this over, move it all around that. For the second time this trip, Captain Slick and boat owner Rick Mears face a busted autopilot on the Francis Ann. These are all the compass headings. Zero degrees on the compass, we're doing 30 on the GPS. Without the autopilot, the boat can't hold a course heading. If it stays broken, the Francis Ann will be done with no money to show for the season. Yeah, the electrician seems to think our compass needs to be compensated. He's doing the best he can to get back to us here, but yeah, right now, that's not good at all. We're gonna go for a spin here and see if we can get a line on that ourselves. The compass and the autopilot have to be able to communicate and yeah, be on somewhat of the same heading to, to hold a steady course. A matter of moving some magnets around, and like a kissing in the wind, or may work, who knows? But at this point, we got to give it a go. Watch your fingers, hope it works. 
the last night this was on trying to hold the 102 it always wanted to come back to 90. rick adjusts the magnets on the compass hoping the compass and autopilot will line up i moved the magnets around a little bit about four inches a little magnet move it a couple inches make all the difference in the world We appear to be holding course here. Right now, it's working. There's hope yet. There is hope. Do we have it 100%? I don't know. Okay. Meanwhile, every other boat in the fleet's got a head start on us now. I think we're going, man. Good luck, the man. Thanks for in the freezer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. At this point, the Francis Anne is just lucky to be fully operational. Hopefully the problem's fixed. If not, I told Rick we're not coming in if it isn't fixed. And Butters is gonna be our autopilot. So hopefully this is our last time we see Barney at Lighthouse for two weeks. So far, Slick's boat holds a course setting. For two hours, we're just out at work. Whether it works for two more hours and the bed, I won't know. I won't know. Because everything's a gamble right now. Coming up. All right, here we come. Captain Linda makes a comeback. One, two, three. And the crew of the big eye gets pounded. This is intense as hell. miles off the coast of Newfoundland. Captain Linda on the Hannah Bowden is locked in a friendly battle with her engineer, Johnny Brewer. We got a little bet going here. We'll catch the most, most fish when they haul. Current score, Johnny is in the lead with two fish. Linda's only got one. Hopefully, what should we shark tonight for dinner? Well, the rest of us are eating T-bone steak. Now, Johnny three, Linda one. There's another one coming there, baby. Woo! Good score, nice sword, Red. Nice one. Nice fish. <laughs> the haulback's nearly over, and Linda goes into her final section, down four to one. Get this one on board. Linda is still in the game. One, two, three. One, two, three. Where's Tom? Two to four. Two to four. I'm building up an appetite for blue shark right now. Yum, yum. The last of the gear gets hauled on board. Last beat for the day. Final score, Johnny four, Linda two. All right, you win, fair and square. Doubled me. Double you. Medium rare, I think. <laughs> I'm thinking, I like it cooked all the way through, but I'll eat it however you prepare it. All right, I'm looking forward to it. Not. Well, the crew's gonna enjoy watching me choke down blue shark. Of course they are. I'd enjoy it if Johnny was eating it. If you get a chance to one up the captain and uh, the holder, maybe next night you'll catch some fish. 800 miles southwest. 
Halifax traffic, fishing vessel Big Eye, channel 14, inbound for Sandbro, how copy? Over. Captain Chomps and the Big Eye steam towards Sandbro, Nova Scotia. As soon as we get to Sandbro, we'll regroup, load everything up, and get back out as fast as possible and make another trip. But as they near the harbor, uh, we have a low pressure system just moving through the area and uh, it's gusting up to about 35 knots right now. 10 to 15 foot seas right now. It's supposed to blow 50 knots today, so the sooner we get in there, the better. Oh, what a day, what a day. Getting kind of out here and it's intensifying by the minute. Adding to the misery. The approach to Sambro Harbor lies through a narrow channel lined with jagged rocks and submerged reefs that could easily rip open the fragile hull of the Big Eye. If that happens, the boat would sink within minutes. It's a fiberglass boat. We're going to try to shoot in there the best we can. We got a good 14 foot swell going on right now. Cross our fingers and just hope that we can get to the dock safe. Barometers dropping by the minute. Winds picking up by the minute. The seas picking up by the minute. What a way to spend the Grand Bank season. Outside, waves rise up to 15 feet. Winds gust to 60 knots. Set down, get inside the boat, get a spot, set the down, and stay there. Everybody, if something happened, just think about it. I don't know if anybody paid attention. They're about 16 foot out there right now. Everybody's nervous right now. You know, you can't see nothing, can't do anything. You're kind of helpless right now. You just kind of ride with it and weather it out. Can't even see what's coming right now. We're just sitting inside the cabin. You can't be out on the cabin. You can't come with now. seen nothing like this in a long time here. That's unbelievable. It's enough to make me want to f*** myself. Holy Just off the coast of Nova Scotia, Canada. I can't see nothing at all. Chomps and the Big Eye are getting blasted by 18-foot seas and 60-knot winds as they try to reach the safety of Sambro Harbor. This ain't nothing to play around with. Big stuff. Biggest stuff we've seen this trip. Pretty intense out there, though. Can't see out there anyway. Y'all better get your life jackets out of there, bud, y'all. Serious. Brutal. Or from the Igor out there. Earlier this season, the big guy took on Hurricane Igor while tied to the dock in Newfoundland. The boat was lucky to remain in one piece. With the storm intensifying, the port sends a pilot boat to try and keep choppers on course and off the rocks. So that's good. We got a set of eyes watching this right now. We're kind of navigate. This is intense as hell. Holy f he's crazy. That's why I like it. Look at this crazy m The port pilot risks his life in order to get the big eye safely to the dock. He might be crazy, but he's helping us. He's up without him. Chomp's boat survives into the inner harbor. Even in here, brutal winds and rain continue to batter the big eye. We're inside the bay right now and it's blowing its ass off. We're gonna have a time just tying this boat up. Another day in paradise. Come on. We're coming in hot. 40 knot gusts shove the boat hard towards the pier. Look at this pile into this dock. 
Put balls in between this guy. Everybody, we're gonna hit right here. In this gale, Chomps has almost no control over his boat. Right up here, right up here. This small fiberglass boat is one strong wave away from being cracked open against the pilots. You got it in there, Woody? Finally secure. My heart's about to beat out of my darn chest. The storm dissipates to the north. First experience, Sam Roa. Hectic. Kind of a pain in the butt to get on the dock, but we got here. The boat's not gonna get beat up. I think we're okay. There was a couple moments I was a little nervous out there, but we made it here safe. God bless the big eye. Now it's time to reclaim the rest of their season. We're going to work our way south. This is George's Banks and go uh, catch some tunas, hopefully, and some swords. And, uh, you know, we ain't out of it yet. We'll get them. We always do. Sometimes it takes a little while, but we're going to get a trip and we're going to get a good one. It's always the darkest before the dawn, so bring it on. We're ready. Give it to us. Far to the northeast of the rest of the fleet. Yeah, steaming again. Uh, ended up with six fish, although they were the right fish that we want, just not enough of them. Captain Linda's decision to stay on the Grand Banks could be coming back to haunt her. It's getting hard to stay excited about what we're doing here. Um, there's a few more places that I need to try, you know, before we finish this deal. And unfortunately for the captain, she still has to pay off the fishing bet she lost to Johnny. Well, we've been uh, soaking this blue shark here and uh milk for half a day. Supposedly milk gets rid of the urine, but uh, we'll find out. Johnny shows some sympathy for his captain, but there's only so much he can do. I usually really look forward to meals around here. It's not going to be a good one. Oh, oh. hi. Hey, got your uh, little dinner going here, Linda. There's gonna, they wouldn't let me microwave it. I was going to microwave it, but they said oh, we had to fry it. God, they wouldn't let you microwave it. <laughs> oh, my God. It's great to watch her squirm, you know? We've caught, we've caught plenty of them. It's only right that she should have to eat one. Yeah, uh, it's got a strong smell of ammonia to it, and uh, like ammonia and urine. Ammonia and urine. urine. <laughs> it's quite a combination. Yeah. I'll oh, show yes. the candle for you. Oh, thank you, Johnny. Thank you. Want me to bring an orange out, too? You're getting all your citrus <laughs> in there. <laughs> it's already got vitamin P in it. Now it needs <laughs> vitamin C. <laughs> vitamin P. Bon appetit. How's my cooking? Oh. God, if I just didn't have to smell it. Oh, God. Sweet. <laughs> and one more bite here. <laughs> that was delicious. Thank you. How do you think you do it? Wet ball through on your back. Good job. Tonight, Captain Linda earns the respect of her crew. It took some courage to do that. I know I wasn't going to use it after smelling it. More power to her. But tomorrow, she needs to put more swordfish in the hold and less blue shark on the plate. That was nasty blue shark. I would not recommend it to anyone for any reason. It's inedible. Oh, I'm getting sick thinking about it again. I gotta go.
<laughs> Coming up, Watch it the crew of the Eagle Eye 2 risks life and limb. You're gonna get bit. Watch out! And later. God bless you, Pops. miles off the coast of Massachusetts. After putting hooks in the water last night. Ah, uh, we're just uh, grabbing the end buoy here. Captain Scotty and the crew of the Eagle Eye 2 try to turn their season around on George's bank. First deeper, first set, George Banks. What's up? First fish on the line, a blue shark. Perfect for Lisa Natanzen's tagging project. Quick jab with the tag pole. Good shot. The line gets cut, and he's off. What you do, you have this uh, tagging applicator here with the slot in it. You've got your tag there, insert into the applicator. So then when the tag goes in, it just pops right out like this. With these tags, Lisa will track shark populations all across the North Atlantic. It's going to be a busy day for me. Blue shark. Nice yeah, that's a good shot. Uh, Lisa's keeping pretty busy there for sure. We're in our second section. Shark! And off goes Lisa again. Coming right to you. Ow! Off he goes. Looking slow. Fishing's looking pretty slow here. Fish on! Blue dog! you got to be kidding me. Oh, oh, the shark carries a tag from a previous trip. And Lisa gets her first shot at a tag recovery. Watch it. <laughs> to get it back, Lisa must risk the blue dog's razor sharp teeth. Watch out! Watch out! Finally, nice. she's got it. Lisa can now determine the shark's migration pattern across the fishing grounds. He didn't want to give us back his tag. It was like a piece of jewelry to him. He didn't want to give it away. I think that's going to be the last one we <laughs> with, because she's going to get bit. He ain't doing that anymore. Oh, come on. You're going to get bit. All right, you get bit, you stay out here and die. I will. Yeah, all right. All right. You 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 can't you can't get too close to their head. He's got one's gonna get you. He's just a little concerned, and rightly so. He doesn't want to have to stop his trip because I get bit. And uh, you know, he uh, it's rightly so. It's a safety issue. With only a few sections left to haul in, Scotty desperately needs to put some money on this boat. Fish on. Yeah, he's thumping pretty lit up, whatever it is. Something heavy comes up on the main line. I wonder if it's a tuna. He's coming. Hold on. Okay, you got him. Yeah! Okay, okay. You ain't got him worth a sh Get another gap! There you go. Oh, oh nice oh, big eye. Good news for the boat. It's a big eye tuna, worth three to five times as much money as a sword. Nice big eye. Maybe about 90 pounds, 80, 90 pounds. Good price on the market for that. At a price of $20 a pound, this one fish is worth up to $1,800. Yep, that's what we want to see. Big eye sushi buyers. They love the big eye. Nice to see them. Hope all these family comes next down to take them all today. Fish on! With that big eye, the luck on the Eagle Eye 2 starts to turn. Sir! Yeah! Oh, sir, baby. Yeah! Fish on! There it comes! There it comes! First yellowfin tuna. 
Georgian banks. For the first time in weeks, they're on the fish. Yeah, yellowfin. Fish on. I fish. Fish on. George's bank becomes an ATM machine in the middle of the Atlantic. Yeah, man, nice door fish, big door fish. Out of the boat! It's a thousand dollar bill on the line. And still, another money fish. Beautiful, beautiful. Day. Eagle Eye 2's first set on George's bank comes to a close. All done with our first fall back here today. After what's easily a $25,000 day. Never happy with my sets, very rarely. Unless we can go home in one set, we always need to catch more. After today's haul back, the Eagle Eye 2 surges into the lead. The Hannah Bowden falls to the middle of the pack. The Big Eye remains dead last. And challenging for the top spot is the Francis Ann. Back on the Eagle Eye. After a successful day of fishing, deckhand Tommy Fox remembers the reason he's out here. Dad, I gotta go catch some big swordfish. But, but the really hard to catch. Hello, Thomas. Yeah, it's Daddy. Guess what? Daddy caught a swordfish today. Nice swordfish, big swordfish. How big? I'm way bigger than your bed. You know how long your bed is? Well, this fish was way longer than that. I was doing my laundry there this evening. I was going through my bag, and a little fella was helping me pack my bag. And this is what I found in it. These little summer pants. Thinking about the family. Hey, you give up everything coming out here. If I stay at this for the rest of my life, I mean, I'm gonna miss out on everything. You're out here 350, 400 miles, and he's in there. It's kind of hard to keep in touch, too, right? You can't go running to the phone every day or twice a day, you know what I mean? Yeah. If you get one phone call a week or two a week, you know, that's, that's about it. That's the most you're gonna get. That's the way it works, I suppose. Someone gotta bring home the bread, hey, what? 70 miles to the west. The Francis Ann is ready to pull its first set on George's bank after five days. We're just pulling up to the buoy here right now, anticipating a good day. Hope I'm not getting overexcited, but we'll find out shortly. Their busted autopilot forced them into a late set out last night. Picking it up pretty soon. Now, the crew will have to pull up the hooks on almost no sleep. I think I'll survive. But we're not number one on the set, we're number five. Now there's nine boats here. Slick is exactly where he didn't want to be, stuck in the middle of the pack. See how we do today? Where are we at? Most people are up. We got rain. What do we got fish? the setbacks of the past several days. Francis Ann desperately needs to put some cash on the boat. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> I have an announcement. Well, Fish on! Swordfish! We are on the live line, connected off the main line, fighting the fish by hand right now. Come on, Danny. Oh, oh. Jumping swordfish! Nice. Oh, like jumping swordfish, like a Mexican jumping bean. We got a fresh one on the line. We got a live sword down here. He's jumping around. How's he gonna lose him? Just about took the entire live line out. Doesn't want to come up. It's going down deep. Yes, yeah, it's coming. First fish of the day, we got a swordfish. Nice start. Just waiting for our big eyes and yellow fins. I feel weight on the line. Fish on the line. Not sure what it is yet. Feels like a tuna. I feel pumping away. So far today, the Francis Ann doesn't suffer from being late to the fishing grounds. 
tuners have a consistent thump, thump, thump. A swordfish have a more lazy bump and roll than a tuna. Nice tuna. Got him. He doesn't have him good. Don't let him get away. Every fish has a different character, feet to its tail. After a long time of doing it, you can feel the line. You can feel what species of tuna or swordfish, blue shark. But you have to know how to fight that fish prior to, you know, snapping on your live line. It's an acquired feel. You either got the knack to feel them or you don't. It's like fishing without a fishing pole. That's what it is. You know the fishing pole you can feel what's going on? This is my fishing pole, my hand. 150 miles to the east. With most of the fleet already on George's bank, Chompers steams south to join them. Like the other captains, he's looking for some sort of redemption. 2010 has been the worst year that the big eyes ever had. My mother's been in the hospital. My stepfather died. Our income has been twice as low as our yearly average was. This 2010 has been a hard, hard year. I'm looking forward to, for it to be over. This season has been especially tough on Chomp's half-brother, Woody. It was his father, Chomper's stepdad, who passed away earlier this year. He fished up here for years. I thought it'd be a good idea to sprinkle his ashes out here. My dad's last goodbye. Last time I used to say goodbye to him. I knew Woody's father. 25 years. Hung around him. I've known him. I fished with him. It's going to be sad. It's going to be real sad. Today, I thought it would be a good idea to do something good for my dad. He's not with us no more. And we're going to have a second funeral for him out here on the boat. God bless the man. He fished for 20, 30 years, scalloping. Very hard working man. God bless him. Sounded good, Woody. Yes, sir. That man would be proud of you. Nope. God bless you, Pops. I'll see you in the near future. May you rest in peace. Yep. I thought it'd be a very nice respectful thing for my dad to just set his soul free. It's part of the sea now. My dad's gonna be with me in my heart, in my soul, forever. He was a very good man, and I'm gonna miss him. A lot of times, commercial fishing is it has a lot of there's a lot more letdowns than, than let ups in it, I guess you would say. We are used to letdowns. This is just another letdown for us, putting my stepfather to rest. But now it's over and we have to move on.